After a few weeks of updates that were really nothing to write home about, we finally have a new update coming to the game that actually is sort of exciting. There's a brand new quest coming to the game called A Taste of Hope, and the requirements are actually a bit more difficult than you might have thought. Today's Thursday, which means it is update Thursday on Old School RuneScape, and before we get into today's video, I just want you guys to know that I completely revamped my public Discord. I combined two previous Discords. I had into one beautiful, massive one right now, so if you guys are not a part of it, I will leave a link at the top of the description of this video, and if you guys are a part of it, make sure to check it out again and see what's new. Hope you guys all join. Again, the link is in the description. Now let's get into today's update. I know that everybody loves quests on Old School RuneScape. Everybody is watching this video is obviously a huge fan of not only the quests on old school runescape but also my quest guides of course so i'm sure you guys are excited to see what this new quest is going to bring so the quest is called as i said a taste of hope and it's part of the mire ditch quest line sort of think of the darkness of halva quest line all those vampires and stuff i think that that quest line isn't everybody's favorite because if you've ever done darkness of halaville you sort of know how frustrating that quest is but i think this one is not going to be as annoying as that one so let's get into the requirements of the quest. You must have completed Darkness of Halvale, speaking of that quest. You also need 48 crafting, 45 agility, 40 attack, 40 herblore, and 38 slayer. So in terms of requirements, they're actually pretty easy. You can all get these fairly easily. I think it's just exciting because a lot of these previous quests we've had come into the game, all these Zaya quests, for example, are all these novice quests that have very, very low requirements. So I think the last biggest one obviously was Dragon Slayer 2, but an experienced quest, I can't remember the last time that actually came out into the game. So in terms of what you get from the quest itself, you get one quest point, you get a Tome of Experience that grants 2,500 XP and three skills of thir in level 35 or above, a new unlimited teleport that takes players directly to the Theater of Blood, and then a new weapon for killing vampires. As I mentioned, this quest is part of the Myrek or Miraqui quest line, one of those weird words that everybody sort of pronounces differently. I can start this quest by speaking to Garth outside of Ver Sinhaza in Eastern Mauritania. So again, I'm sure guides are gonna be out by the time this video is out, so feel free to check it out. But I'm gonna guess if we hit, you know, 10,000 likes, I'll make a quest guide, so you know what to do. Usually when a new quest comes into the game, there are new areas that come with it as well, and this one is no different. It's actually sort of exciting because we're seeing an area of the map with new stuff in it for the first time ever. A huge block of black squares are now no longer part of the world map. You can see right here that today's update has seen a new area added to the world map. Isn't it satisfying to see fewer black squares. So if we go to the world map, we can see that, you know, looks pretty normal. And then boom, we head over to the mire ditch area, which is right here. And we have this whole new area, Mauritania, there's Port Fatasmus, go a bit south and east of mire ditch, east of dark mire, where you do the darkness of Hellville quest, east of barrows and all over here. We have a new area called S Slep, sleep. <laughs> and of course we have, I, th I guess this is the raids area right here, which is Ver. Sinhaza. So we have this section right here, and then we have this section over here. You can get to the new area by walking from Port Fatasmus, or taking a boat from the nearby Ectofunctus, or walking through Myrditch itself if you actually completed the Darkness of Halavale quest. The new area contains locations to hunt swamp lizards, cut yew trees, and there are new swamp crabs for you to fight as well. One of the most notable additions to the map is the Town of Sleep, which contains a host of new characters and lore to immerse yourself in. And then we'll give a shout out to Mod Surma from the Adutin as well, for the two new music tracks he has provided. Pretty cool to see a new area in the game, so if you guys have the requirements or you want to get your quest gate back or whatever, make sure you guys do the new A Taste of Hope quest. There is a new poll in game at the moment to vote between two designs for the new Justiceer armor that are coming into the game when the Raids 2 gets released, so if you guys want to vote between either armor A or armor B, then the poll is in game for you guys to vote. I mean, I think, I think both are really cool, but I think I'd have to go with Legends Arts, I think this one looks really nice. Today's another news section is a mixed bag of happy and sad news because we'll, we're saying goodbye to some things and we're actually saying hello to some things as well. So let's start off at the top of the end of the news section. Chambers of Zarek Challenge Mode. If you guys have been playing this last week, especially apparently Tecton's defense was really, really, really high and unnecessarily high and people were getting really, really annoyed. It's actually now been changed so that his defense will scale less harshly for challenge raids consisting of smaller numbers of players and even less for solo players. The challenge mode week one leaderboards have been updated, so if you guys managed to get first in any of those leaderboards, then congratulations. An additional 12,000 people have been invited to the Android Always On beta for old school mobile, so if you guys applied for the mobile beta and you're an Android user, then make sure to check your in-game message box system because you guys may have been invited. And then the sad news today is that RuneScape Classic is going to be closing. RuneScape Classic is going to be closing forever. There's an article about this. I will leave it in the description 
of this video, which is, you know, I never played it personally. I never played all the way back then, but uh, it's sort of sad. I mean, our membership prices are 11 bucks now, you know? I feel like we can keep these servers up. There's what, four servers? I don't know. Pretty sad news, but I guess Dragex thinks it's for the best. And finally, if you guys are into dead man mode, the dead man summer finals are getting very, very close. If you guys want to check out the article they wrote about that, there is a new dead man survey for summer finals and autumn season. There's an article that they put out about that. So again, that will be in the description of the video. And finally, in today's update, we apparently have a new gaming laptop giveaway from the old school team. That's something Facebook related. And then there is a new membership package as well as summer special package. You guys can get three months of membership for the price of two, which is six months of membership for the price of five. Now that's going to finish it off for today's RuneScape updates. What I'm going to do now is actually go over the RuneLight update. So if you guys don't use RuneLight or you don't really care about the RuneLight updates, then this is the end of the video. But if you guys use RuneLight and want to see the updates to the client, I'm going to go over them right now. As you guys know, RuneLight had the okay to continue development on the client itself. So hopefully this client's going to be back for good with no more issues in the future. And there's now 23 and a half thousand players on the client itself. I mean, it's only grown since everything that's happened the past week. So that is awesome. So the 1.4 release. The first thing is something I'm super excited for. And that is the new Obsidian theme, which has finally been released. It reskins the client UI and most of the plugin panel interfaces as well shout out to psi koi has been working on it the last month it looks absolutely amazing i personally love dark themes and pretty much everything i use these days so it looks really really nice if you guys don't really like the previous grayish color of runelight and want this sort of darker gray and sort of black grayish mixture i don't even know what the color is you can now use it on the client there's now an interface style plugin as well which will switch your sort of things on the right side to the 2005 or 2010 game frames i know this was very popular on other clients so if you guys want to play way old school you can switch to the 2005 version if you want the more pre-EOC game frame you guys can switch to the 2010 version. There is now a screen marker plugin as well to add marked areas on your screen. Support for level goals has been added that loads the XP and level goals from the vanilla client and it displays it on your XP tracker on RuneLight. The world map plugin now shows all teleport locations and details requirements for all agility obstacles. And there are now some bug fixes that have been fixed as well so you can read through them if you want. Anyways, guys, that's going to finish it off for today's video. Thank you guys all again for watching. Don't forget to join my Discord if you guys haven't already, and all the update links are in the description of the video. Thank you guys all for watching. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one, and peace. Wow.